court. I know some of you guys are up. I know you are. Okay, I can't see a thing. It's okay, though. My eyes are fixated on a few uh, other things. Guys, we sit a few hours away from a strike. Uh, Middle Eastern upset, if you would. I tell you, this tension in the Middle East is not really declining. Of course, Reading in the book of Revelation, we know that at some point, at some point, a coalition of forces will act surprising everybody in the Middle East. I believe that a lot of uh, people who are following prophecy, especially those who are known uh, you have known qualifications in prophecy, spiritual qualifications. They are awaiting a conflict. <coughs> Excuse me. A conflict of sorts. I'm going to take it easy on my uh, voice. It is preparing nicely. I don't want to mess it up. I did that today, by the way. I got a little too happy. And, uh, of course, it went right back out again. That it did. So it came back, and I will not get the, uh, I'm not going to yell or anything. Can't do that. I'm going to bring up somebody so I can at least test to see if anybody's uh, awake out there. I have no feedback at the moment. Um, or it's changing the pages uh, in councilofthon.com and I had to revert back to the original uh, pages real quick due to a code error an oversight because we need to get our account pages posted so everybody is uh, Everybody is in there. Okay, here we go. Wait a minute. Let me get this in there. Real quick. I do not see. I don't believe that we're good to go here. I believe we are. Let me see. I probably did the wrong one. I can almost guarantee I did. Well, if you're out there, then God bless you guys. If you're out there, God bless you. I'm with you. Folks, it is probably a good thing we did delay the Revelation topic due to uh, some developments that are taking place and will take place. The Middle East is, has, has, uh, a history of being unstable, very unstable, uh, as far as we're concerned, because they have a different set of cultures and ideologies, right? In this, in 2024, the world itself is gearing up for major conflict, major conflict. It is, we deal with a lot of instabilities, we do. And we have dealt with the instabilities, but the build-up that's taking place now is far beyond what we've had in previous uh, times, in our known time. Right? It is very sneaky, I guess you could say, because it looks like it's a continuation of policy, as it has been. Uh, but behind the scenes, or should I say outside, Right outside of view of most people, there's a buildup. People are working uh, overtime strategy, and the populace, for the first time, the populace 
is becoming uh, a little unnerved by activities that are taking place. So much so, you're going to hear people come forward to calm the populace down. Now, what that means is we've not we've not really had this before in in normal times. A leader would speak or somebody would speak and tell everybody they have nothing to worry about, right? They tried that, and it did not work. It, it only increased the frequency of those who were having conversations about these uh, events in the Middle East had only increased how many were engaged. And so they're having a problem in calming the populace. Folks, this will translate into further aggressive behavior. Right? It will. It's going to translate. We, we, you know, we're at a point we don't need more uh, aggression. We don't need that. People are having enough to. Uh, they're having enough difficulty holding on to peace. Right? We see an outbreak again of violence, which, by the way, has never stopped. But we see an outbreak of it. We see it being covered more and more. We see people doing uh, bold and brazen acts of violence. In view of the whole world, this will only become worse as they seek to calm the populace over the inevitable. Which, by the way, is twofold. Not only war and those happenings in war, but also of nature itself, of the heavens, right? Incursions from space, small impacts, the beginning of uh, a storm from the heavens. All this will entertain, and when people begin to experience this uh, collectively, you can imagine how much peace will be broken in the earth, even more than it already is now. You guys know I'm under no illusions. I do not believe the earth is peaceful. I'm thankful at the level of uh, some sort of continuity that we do have and some sort of peace is being held. I'm very thankful for that. But we all know as these conditions continue, people are going to become worse, desperate, non-caring, more violent, bolder in their activities and actions against what they don't believe in. Right right now, we, we exist in a time right before the U.S. government loses face. And briefly, I want to talk to you guys about this to put this in your minds. I, I, I really don't think it is uh, discussed enough. I know that people discuss strategy. They cover the stories of what's happening. But can they see what's developing right before their faces? Can they see it? I believe that those who are spiritually walking or living their lives have a certain sensation and discernment and understanding that things are quickly uh, spiraling out of control. I believe that this feeling that many have lived with spiritually for a while, this unsettling feeling, right? Um, I believe those people who are, I, I do pray they grow a number, but I believe they are keenly aware of some of the uh, strange activity from people they see. Strange. Now, I do not believe that those outside of a spiritual awareness can see what's happening at all. I don't believe they can. And I'm going to talk to you guys about this year, what's happening, what's developing, what will no doubt continue to develop, and it's beginning to engulf many different uh, strategies of resolve. It's affecting every institution, small and big, <clears throat> and it's about to escalate. 
I pray that God's people are aware of it. Right? So you don't lose your footing. But it's certainly on the rise. I would like to ensure that I do my part in getting people to recognize it. You know, just in the Bible, the Lord talks to us about the end of things, doesn't he? Prophecy. Prophecy talks about the end of things. Prophecy talks about how the Lord will destroy specific things. Prophecy gives us warnings and declarations. It does. In other words, prophecy is not good news. Prophecy is an indication of what humanity is doing and what direction they're headed. And according to prophecy, man is not headed for some sort of reconciliatory place in time, but they're going headlong into very destructive paths. And the Lord all but begged us to stay in the path of life, right? Which, by the way, is the gospel of Jesus Christ, but in the path of life, walking with ways of life, ways that are established by Christ. Not the destructive ways that so many seem to take. Right? These destructive ways are going to become the ways that are normal. In fact, to, to many they're going to become such a normal way that people will seek those destructive ways that we see as destructive right now. They're going to normalize them, thus increasing destruction upon the face of the earth. And then, of course, the physical portion, the physical part of man's activity always falls. With prophecy, God gives a warning. Man decides. Based on man's decision, he will walk one way or another. Based on his decision, he partakes of the results of the prophecies. Right? Like Sodom and Gomorrah. The Lord told them he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But for the sake of a few righteous, he would spare the whole city. That's what he said. Right? For the sake of a few, he would spare the whole city. Right now, because of the righteous, because of those who seek the Lord in earnest, many things, I believe, have been held back. It's not like a, a, a person who follows stats would actually believe. Right? Things are being held back for the sake of those who have an earnest and earnest pursuit of Christ and his righteousness. Things are being held back. Many things should have taken place already. Massive and great earthquakes. Large and destructive volcanic eruption, er, eruptions, right? But they didn't. Why? Why did they not happen? All indications pointed towards these things happening, and they did not. I believe that the Lord is holding these things back for the sake of the righteous. But take note. The Bible also teaches us. Now, keep in mind, God is holding things back. But he also said that people are going to start falling away. And it is the falling away that's going to end the holding back of these horrific consequences that we all face. In other words, the number of the righteous will decline. And in that decline of the righteous, as more and more people are given over to seducing spirits, as that number declines, so will the protection or the holding back of things be let go by the living God and we'll begin to experience the very things we see in prophecy. Even right now, we see the threat of prophecy right now. The Middle East, we all know that all it takes is one wrong move and that the entirety, the, the whole of the Middle East will be engulfed in conflict. We know that one wrong word one wrong activity in the USA, and we're going to be involved in a type of civil war. We know that one, one strategic move by terrorists in Europe 
it will engulf the whole of Europe, right, in something they have never endured before. We know that how delicate the UK is, right, that that family of leadership, should they fracture in any way, it'll cause a disruptive ripple within the people. We know that. We know these things. But if you look carefully, it looks like those who once followed a righteous path, you can actually start to see people. They're taking the way of Cain. They're taking the, the flesh way out of things. They're giving more and more credence to those resolve of mankind or just totally getting away from their faith, period. Thus, we have a number of those who were once following the Lord. That number is changing. It's changing. And so, as that number changes, <clears throat> we're going to have less and less of the righteous on the earth. And things will not be held back. They won't be held back. You see the buildup. You do. And specifically here in the United States of America, we have notable issues to both identify. Prepare yourselves for the outcome of those issues face reality regarding what's happening now and to really begin to get ourselves prepared for what none of us want to endure. We do. And by the way, since the USA is an ally of Israel, right, and we see that, that partnership, that commitment our commitment, the USA with Israel, is strained. We see it. We see it. We know that there will be a consequence to what happens in the USA and other parts of the world almost instantaneously. We see that. So, I'm going to take a break and come back. We're going to cover that briefly. Just sure. I want you guys to be aware of it. Think about it. Right? Because if we can, if we can, can we do something? by way of materials to give it to reach out to those in the world who may also suspect the diminishing right, of what held us together for so long. If we could do something in regards to the word of God to reach out to others, to anybody who would consider that we can do collectively for someone. Right? That we can do so that someone can both have an understanding of what's happened according to the words of God, and it will take all of us to do that, right? And, and be keenly aware of what the Lord has said. That's why I like prophetic teachers. I do. Those that God has blessed me to be able to meet some extraordinary people. He has. He really has. And believe me, these people are extraordinary. The, the folks that the Lord has introduced me to are extraordinary. Even beyond their own comprehension, they are so extraordinary beyond their own comprehension. God will validate his own people. He will. He will vindicate his own people. And his own people, right? They were also encouraged by people sent in the word of God. Did you guys notice that? That the prophets were sent to encourage the people to continue in God's way. Did you notice that? <clears throat> it wasn't some automatic thing people did. No. They were encouraged by the prophets. When 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 somebody like a prophet, when a prophet comes, a prophet is, is someone who speaks what thus saith the Lord, right? What the Lord speaks. That's what a prophet is. When they do come, they start declaring destructive things upon the earth. It's a warning to the righteous. God warns the righteous. 
He does not warn the other ones. How do we know that? Because in the New Testament, God said, who told you to flee the coming wrath? Who, you know, who gave you that word? Those warnings are for those who would hear them, who would pay attention to them. I'll say that again. The prophetic warnings in the word of God and any warnings from the living God are for those who would hear him. They are not for those who refuse to hear him. They're for those who would take them in, not for those who would dissect them and change them. That's what it's for. That's what it's for. That's why Jesus said, those who have ears, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. So that means those who don't have ears, so those who refuse to hear it, it's not for them. What the Lord has to say is for those who would hear him, not for those who continually fight him, resist him. Keep that in mind so that you don't find yourself wasting your time trying to make somebody hear something that God never gave a word to. But we have to get ready. I'll be back in a few minutes right here at COT. I'm going to try to be calm, keep my voice level throughout the whole thing. Hopefully. It may or may not work. We'll see. I'll be right back in a few minutes. And I did not start the music. Hold on. It's starting right now, so just stand by, everybody. It'll kick up and cue in. And I'll be right back right after that. Well, all of you are still awake. My goodness, where did you guys come from? Is uh, all of you guys out there restless? Okay, our conversation about the USA. I want you guys to see something. We, uh, here in the USA, it is no, no, no question that we have a conflict within government. We do. Right? A bitter conflict to the point where people have been injured in Congress. You guys know that. From other folks. In other words, you have folks from the Republican and conservative sides hurting each other. Hurting each other in the world is a bit different than the spiritual side of things. But in the world, whatever you see leadership do, right, it's going to trickle down to the people. When you submit, I want you guys to understand these principles. When you submit yourself to someone, for example, right, your submission to somebody else of your own free will, but whatever the case is, once you're submitted to somebody else, you will partake of the fruit of who you submit yourself to. So if you submit yourself to an individual who's wholesome and righteous, you will partake of the fruit of that individual, which will likely be righteous and wholesome. But if you submit yourself to somebody was callous, cold, right? Worldly, you're going to have, you're going to partake of the fruit and it's callous, cold, and worldly, the results of that, all right? Leadership, those who follow leadership have been the very ones who have enacted violent uh, acts upon the opposing sides. There are many people in Congress whose spouses have been hurt and hospitalized because of politics. This is where it gets sticky. Demonic entities, just as you would love to give somebody a handshake and a hug, they love to murder one another. 
Please remember that. <clears throat> they love that. Right? Where you would have a strong desire to embrace someone, they have a strong desire to murder their brother. And they do this upon agreement. There's been case after case after cases where a person obviously had a spirit cohabitating with them. And that spirit gets very antsy and it has to shed blood, it has to murder. It has to maim, it has to break. They're governed by this. Consequently, that's why no one should try to understand the mind of evil. Because it is opposite love itself. But those people who have these things in them, right? They often hit a point, if they have done no violent thing, they'll say, I, you know, the, the, these things inside them will begin to speak out. Should they find another person with something inside them? I've heard it. I've heard this. They'll say, are you ready, my brother? They'll start using those type terms. And then they'll start fighting each other, hospitalizing one another. Now, demonic entities may love this. They love to perish. Come back and do it again. That's what they like. And it was I know it's different. See a lot of people think it's like an evil person. No it is not. An evil person only conveys bits and pieces of what's driving that darkness. But darkness itself it is almost incomprehensible. You know? The same way these demonic entities love to murder one another, and in truth, they mess what they do, the same spirit is occupying places where the Holy Spirit is not. So if a person does not have Christ in them, chances are, one of those things is in them. That means, if a person is not washed by the blood of the Lamb, something else has already taken over. Can you imagine looking at the world, looking at the United States, looking in government, and actually being able to see who's washed by the blood of the Lamb and who is not? Because every person that is not washed by the blood of the Lamb is likely filled with something else. One of these entities. Thus we have a situation in leadership, don't we? See, as they continue to practice more and more pagan acts, okay? yoga, things of that nature, people who really study the chakras, certain parts of the body, they're given over to a different type of spirit. They are. Because they always end up doing the one thing, right? That marks a person who is becoming devoid of spiritual things. They are preoccupied with saving their own flesh and everything of flesh. Because that's all they have. But the numbers of those who are not covered by the blood of the Lamb obviously is growing. Violence is a mark of these people. Just as you would leave a trail of love in your footsteps, they would leave a trail of hatred, of death, of confusion. Satan is the author of confusion. Wherever you find confusion, Satan is present. He's been there. It's this, it's this touch where you find reconciliation, where you find healing of the soul. Forget about the flesh, healing of the soul when you find that. That's a mark of your creator, of Christ more specifically. But what are we seeing all over the world? 
we see where people would gather, where they would seek to celebrate something. There's an opposing force so strong that violence would break out. We're starting to see this inside congressional chambers. Fist fight. Two more took place within a week. Though they said they would not publicize that again. It fuels too many people. Did you hear me? They're physically fighting in places where they shouldn't. Our leaders are physically fighting each other. Spouses are being hurt and hospitalized from being hurt. Can you imagine those in Congress who have spouses and their spouse receives a concussion by the opposing party? People seeking to kill them. Actual attempts being made. The one thing they won't share with the public are these attempts. There have been so many attempts to kill these people. And it's becoming more and more violent. And why? Because that's one of the marks of change. Every time true change comes, Satan does not want to give up territory. Evil does not want to give up territory. Now, this evil is not Democrat or Republican, no. The good is not Democrat or Republican, no. The evil it's the same thing we've been reading about and other ministers have been reading about for years. The spirit of Antichrist. It's as if darkness is taking up position. It's last positions. To pervert everything it can before they make the move. There are people within the USA who are loyal to something else. They're not loyal to democracy as you would think it to be democracy. And this is, here's a problem. You guys have, an, have a mindset concerning how things work in the world. Well, let me tell you something. There are a group of people who believe that the government is under siege. Listen to me carefully. And they believe it's up to them to liberate the government. Please hear me carefully. These people number in the millions. They will make their move at some point. They will do what is necessary to establish what they believe in. Now, do they believe in democracy? Yes, they believe in democracy. Here's the problem, though. You can have two people that believe in democracy, the way that we live our lives here in America, and the way that we seek to live our lives here in America, you can have two people that believe and define it the same way, but think of it differently. See, if I believe democracy, it's the people having a voice, not the will of the people, right, actually be the institution. That's one way to think of it. But if we have another people, another person who believes in the same thing, but they also believe that those in power, those in power, listen to me carefully, that they believe that those in power have a skewed view of democracy and they ultimately blame them for the breakdown of their nation and they want to reestablish whatever their idea of a nation is. you got a problem. When you have two people that believe or that define something exactly alike, but their belief in it is different. you got a problem because those two people are going to begin to fight one another. They're going to blame each other. They're going to say, this side has a corrupt view of what we believe in. And they're going to say, that side has a corrupt view of what we believe in. Now, we're not talking about checks and balances. The initial installment of the Republican and Democratic Party to keep one another balanced, right? We're not talking about that. No, we're talking about people who believe the government is under siege. 
They believe that a threat is coming. Uh, let's speak plainly. The Democrats believe that the Republicans are one of the greatest threats to democracy. And the Republicans believe that the Democrats are the greatest, greatest threat to democracy. They're not reconciling. And because the leaders continue to talk this way, the people are positioning themselves all over the USA to act in case of an emergency. All the preparations that you guys saw in 2012 will ultimately be used for Civil War times. The bunkers, the storage of ammunition and food and everything else will likely not be used for troubles in the heavens, but likely will be used to fight the forces that they're around right now. <clears throat> it's already been demonstrated that parents who can kick their children out of the house because of what they believe in their minds and children who can divorce their parents because of how their parents believe, we already know that the bonds of family within this country are not so strong to keep people together anymore. No. But based on what their leaders are saying, they will oppose and oppose in strength. And what we see here is a divide so incredibly strong. Listen, if, the le if leadership spoke differently, healing would begin, but they're not going to speak differently. You guys do know that, don't you? They're not going to speak differently. It's growing. It's building. coming. People have short fuses these days. Don't they? And just about everybody is armed, aren't they? See, Satan is slick, isn't he? Hear me on this. Any good thing, right, from righteous people. Suppose we were going to get ready for a big storm, and so we go get wood and nails and nail guns and plywood and everything else. Seems innocent, right? Seems innocent. Now, then we find out that storm is not coming. We say, oh, that's a relief. But we know more storms are going to come, so we keep the materials. When the adversary comes in, he's going to see what we prepared for. And he will seek to pervert. Everything we did, why? Because we believe in Christ. He's going to seek to pervert everything we did. And when he comes in to pervert everything we did, he's going to start altering the mindsets of those he can alter. And that same plywood, somebody is going to cut into spears. The nail gun is going to be retrofitted to shoot somebody with nails. It'll be turned into a weapon, not a tool. Satan is famous for taking tools, usurping the ideology behind them, so that people will utilize the tools as weapons to kill other human beings. Do you hear me? Satan will usurp anything that was founded in righteousness to pervert it. He cannot help it. And if you don't believe that, look at the Constitution. Did Satan not usurp the Constitution by way of amendments, by way of people's own ideologies, to change them to a degree that leadership cannot agree on what they are. Leadership does not see eye to eye on freedom of speech or freedom of expression, those type things. They do not see eye to eye. Why? Because Satan has come in and usurped the goodness out of them caused confusion by them to make people fight one against the other over ideas, to make them divide, to make them destroy one another. 
He has people that he will use from time to time that will test the limits of man's laws. And that person will stand up utilizing those laws to protect themselves so they can do acts of violence. Like these mass shooters. They have a right to bear arms. Right? Oh, Lord have mercy. So then a person with that right to bear arms. His spirit is wrong one day. He goes out and shoots a bunch of people, utilizing the same freedoms that we do utilize. Satan loves to pervert. He loves to pervert. Now, that means those laws that were installed for the goodness of this nation, have been usurped, utilized for division. But what I want you to see is this. All those folks who are not covered by the blood of the Lamb are people who we utilize. Listen, they got something in them. They have no protection from these dark entities perverting their minds who then gain entrance into that vessel and begin to manipulate everything about that vessel into its own extensions of, of harm. This is what we're seeing manifest all throughout the United States. We're seeing people who are not covered by the blood of the Lamb, a bunch of New Agers who believe in New Age things. They have no protection from Satan, and Satan is utilizing them to further divide the people, to cause violence, death, all sorts of things. Now that means, listen, of all the people in the U.S., how many people are not subservient to Jesus Christ. Think about that. How many people are not believers in Christ? Think about that. I mean actual believers. How many people are not believers? Hear me. Within your families, outside of your families, those people who do not believe in Jesus Christ, that they would serve him, can be utilized by Satan at any given moment of the day. Do you hear me? Satan has not gone full force yet. Satan is poking and prodding. Do you know how many people live in the USA who do not accept Christ nor any ideology dealing with Christ? Do you understand that? Do you understand how many people are like that these days? Lots of people are like that these days. And that means Satan at any time can use any of those vessels. Every time we have a mass shooting, it is two to three weeks and we have another mass shooting. Those people, Satan is getting to them. Simple as that. And when he gets to someone not covered by the blood of the Lamb, they have no protection. They don't. I want you to look at your nation. Look at what's happening in politics. How many of those people in the White House believe in Jesus of Nazareth, that they are washed by the blood of the Lamb. Let's go ahead and face the truth. Because if they don't believe in Jesus of Nazareth and do serve him, they can be utilized by Satan at any given moment. If a saint can be used in a moment of weakness by Satan, can be talked into doing pervert or perverted things. What do you think a person who does not even accept Christ? To what level? Could they be used? Think about that. But I'm going to take another look at what's happening because God's mercy is being demonstrated every day. You know and I know he's holding back these people 
who are devoid of righteousness. He's holding them back. They can't do everything they want to do. Anyway, are you folks starting to see that? So, so what that means is right now you're in the middle of a situation where you have a lot of people who do not believe in Christ. They are fighting each other for control of leadership of this nation. Watch how large the crowds will become. Watch. And then watch what happens in those crowds. Watch what happens in America as a whole. You believe in Christ. You're washed by the blood of the Lamb. Lamb's blood on the doorposts. Huh? Others will not be that fortunate. Violence will work through anybody it can work through. Well, let me give you, here's how violence works. You ready? One person is protecting their family. They have a power outage, right? So they have weapons in the home. But they're washed by the blood of the lamb and they see a person approaching the home. So they're not eager to kill the person they watch. So the person gets about 10 feet away from the house and the guy says, stop. What are you doing? And the guy says, I'm hungry. He says, look, I don't have to take another step, but can you throw me a piece of bread or something? I'll be grateful. And so he does. And the guy's about to walk away. And when he's about to walk away, the owner of the house says, hey, hey, come on in out of, the, out of, the, out of those elements, right? Because he tested that guy to see what he was about, right? So he brings the guy into his home. Now, you have other people out there that are not believers, that are not washed by the blood of the Lamb. They come up to your home snooping and sniffing around. And they're going to act like they're innocent. Hey, I just, I was looking for something to eat. All the while, the guy is still approaching. The owner of that home, he may be forced to do something he didn't want to do, right? Right? Because if you have evil people filled with these dark spirits, they will take advantage of every situation. Remember the first guy that came up, he said, throw me a piece of bread and, and I'll go away. And in fact, that's what he did. Well, you know, Satan sees that. And he seeks to pervert any act of goodness. So he replicates the same thing. Folks, you better get me on this because, uh, listen, I'm trying to speak around a target thing. But if you can see this, you'll start identifying many works of darkness in your life that you would not be affected by them anymore. So I'll say it one more time. There you go, Rick. Rick just said it. See, I've been trying to get you guys to see this because it's all over the place. You identify this, you'll start to see exactly what's being spoken of, and you will not be targets. You won't be. You can help somebody else not be a target too. Because some people walk right in. In the, right into a knife. They do. The good things that are in this nation, the good laws, the good things like that. You, you hear a Christian, you hear Christians talk about politics. They have such hopeful hearts, right? They do. Hopeful. A lot of them, some of them have not been exposed to the truly dark thing of this world. Not yet. They haven't been. And so sometimes it does not come into their minds because they're hopeful. When you're hopeful about something, right? When you're truly hopeful, you're going to have faith and believe in the good outcome of something. You will. <clears throat> but sometimes, sometimes all of us miss the fact that Satan will take what is meant for good and pervert it. 
and use it as a weapon against the righteous. And I'll say it again, that's why the Bill of Rights has been perverted. Your documented freedoms in this nation have been perverted. All of a sudden, people are shooting each other, right? Mass shootings increasing. They are. Terrible acts of violence increasing. People beheading people while they're going down the hall, uh, highway. That's increasing, too. God uses his people, yes. But Satan will always seek to pervert what is righteous. And what that means is, if you were to ever hit a moment of weakness or turn your back on the living God, just totally denounce him, you'll be taken over in less than uh, in a few seconds. You'll be taken over. Because you had the mark of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, Mike, I'm not even sure if our government knows about the Constitution. Of course they do. Listen, though. Listen, though. Get the context of this talk. They know about the Constitution intimately. But when darkness gets a hold of your mind, your interpretation of something changes. This is how Satan is working. The interpretation of freedom is altered in the minds of those who are filled full of darkness versus those who are filled full of Christ. Do you see that? Your idea of freedom is different than those who are full of darkness. Do you hear me? Darkness believes in things differently than you do. And this clashing of ideologies is coming to its maximum point. That causes civil wars. When people have different definitions of what freedom is. A person who is righteous, they believe in discipline. They believe in the ways of the Lord. They also believe in freedom. So to a person who stands in righteousness, freedom is not to, to, to promote abominable things. But to a person who does not believe in Jesus Christ... To promote an abominable thing is a very innocent act. You see that? Darkness believes in things differently. Okay. Okay. You guys stand by. I'll be right back in a few minutes. Hopefully you got that part. That's the part I want you to see, right? Then you have two sides, two sides to everything. And Satan has a different definition. He gives a different definition to all of who he can to destroy the righteous, to pervert the righteous. So then democracy means something different based on who you're serving. Do you hear me? It's based on who you're serving. There is no reconciliation of that by the mechanisms of flesh that can only be settled spiritually. And according to the word of God, this is what will escalate in the earth. Do you all see that? So you're... It, that's why there are people waiting to serve either side and to enforce what their leaders decide. So where does that leave you, though? You're the ones with the ability to actually see it. I'll be right back in a few minutes right here at COT. I'm back. I'm back. Listen, I want to tell you guys something. I'm going to ask you guys something, something that was asked of me. How do you know in leadership who's a Christian and who is not? 
Anybody. Now, that word Christian means Christ-like. In today's world, it just means it's been somewhat diminished. It means someone who believes in Jesus Christ. Someone who right, goes to church on Sunday. Lots of diverse actions. Somebody asked me that uh, because they were asking me about Biden and Trump specifically. You want to know what my answer was? To believe in Jesus is one thing, right? To believe that Jesus existed, to believe in Scripture, right, is very difficult to prove. It is. But Jesus said something that marks all of us. You ready? Something I've been able to see through from day one. It allows you to see without without uh, your vision being blurred. It allows you to see through. Because how many of you have known a Christian, right? <clears throat> they said they were a Christian. But they ended up doing something so terrible that you say there's no way that person is a Christian, right? How many people have you met that say they believe in Jesus that have gone back and did some things that uh, a Christian cannot do? And we're not talking about backsliding. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about people who love to cause the hurt of other people. Charles Manson said that he believed in Christ. He was a Christian. Do you know that? That's what he said. He professed to be one. So professing to be one does not make you a Christian. Doesn't. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And see, there, there's a key right there. If you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Now, why is that so important? Because if a person does not continue in the words of Christ, they have turned away. He said, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And that's one thing you ought to remember. He also said this. Here's the big one. Because... You guys remember, uh, they, you know, they try to compare Trump to Cyrus. I didn't like that comparison. I'll tell you why. Cyrus was not a believer in Christ. Jesus used Cyrus. I mean, the, the father used Cyrus. The father also used Pharaoh. Pharaoh was not a believer. The father also used King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar. Only believed by what he saw, the, the magnitude of what he went through, he believed and then turned away again. And so it worse being multi, you know, a multitude of gods again. So at the core, these men were not believers in the Father as we are. No. They were made aware of him, but they did not, they weren't believers in him. You couldn't call them Christians. They didn't adopt. They did not adopt that lifestyle. Right? Being Christian. Jesus said that, he said, you'll know, disciples will be known, right? Followers of Christ are going to be known by how they love one another. Uh-oh. So here's what that means. If you have two people that believe in Christ, how can they hate each other? Hmm? How can they hate each other? You'll know the disciples of Jesus. Now, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you're my disciples indeed. So then being a disciple is actually being a Christian. Being a disciple, a student of the gospel of Jesus Christ, a follower of what Jesus said, that is a Christian. Not what people call it today. They're just throwing titles on everything. Those who continue in the words of Christ, 
those who continue and believe. But he said, you'll know they'll be known by how they love one another. So if you have two people who believe in Jesus of Nazareth, how can they hate each other? Come on, folks. You cannot hate another believer in Christ and call yourself a Christian. You can't. Because to hate another person means you observe the flesh. And your stance is by flesh, not by faith. See how that works? Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. And I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this because a lot of people over time are fooled by the words of others, by what they profess. You know what, people at COT, they say all sorts of things about me. And you know what I used to tell them? Time proves all things. Time proves all things. In other words, keep listening. Huh? I'm going to keep going because it's in the heart of my heart. Eventually, somebody will yield fruit, and you'll know, you'll know a tree by its fruit, but you'll know a believer if they're a disciple or not by how they love one another. Disciples do not hate each other. It's that simple. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because people have complicated that issue so much. And it should not be complicated. See, I'm very careful, though. I, but you guys will not hear me condemn a leader. Do you know why? Because they could not be a leader unless God had assigned them to be a, a leader. Remember that. And I'll say it again. God selected uh, Solomon and David, correct? But he also selected who? King Nebuchadnezzar and Pharaoh. Did they? He also selected a multitude of other kings out there and, and, and queens or whatever the case is to lead people that were not anywhere close to believers. Is that correct? So then being selected by God to do a specific thing does not make you a saint or a Christian. It just means God is utilizing his creation. We forget that. We are God's creation. He can use us for his will in any capacity he so chooses. For you to identify who is a true believer in Christ, you do that by way of love. Hmm? You see that? That's how you identify them. Not by what they say. You can't identify me as a Christian by what I say. You can't do that. You can't do that. No, no, no. But when the chips are down, listen to me carefully. When the chips are down and things have gone wrong, if I were to begin to lash out at you, it reveals the truth of me. Do you hear me? In the storm, you're going to know who is who by how they love one another. It is so easy to act like you love everybody in a time of peace. It is not easy to act like you love someone when everything is going wrong. That's when you find out who is who. When the pressure is high, then you will see if they truly love somebody else or not. You'll not see it any other time. Now, now that we have covered that, you can no doubt see that our country, our countries respectively, need intercession from true believers. Never follow a person by what they say. Always search the scriptures to find out what Jesus said. Know the situation by the words of righteousness and go forward from there. Hmm? I'm going to point something out. Do you see how that, if we're not reminded of Scripture, that we have our own individual ideologies of how to do things? Do you all see that? And if we don't put that in check, by the words of truth, 
all of us start running in different directions. Correct? Which means what? We have to be careful to remind each other of Scripture. That's a good thing. It's a good thing when you remind me of Scripture, when I remind you of Scripture. It's a good thing. Remind, not force, but remind. That's a good thing because it keeps us all keeps us all on that path of truth. Hmm? All of us. Remember that. Because the world itself is falling. It's, it's breaking down. It's not happening overnight, no. But the, de the, the degradation of this world is, is happening quicker and quicker each day. And if we can have that concrete word of the living God, we do well. We do well. If we drift away from that word, we'll become just like those that we observe in today's world that are the root of the confusion that we see. Remember that. That's how we know. I wonder if you guys to uh, to see that. Because as you may or may not know, as we get closer to these elections, people are going to go to the extremes. You will witness man worship. You will. You'll witness things you wouldn't believe. Sacrifices. You're going to witness sacrifices. You're going to witness quite a few things. Your prayers are of great necessity. They are. But the Lord's way is the only way. Not my way, not your way, not anybody else's way, but the Lord's way. And the more we hold on to that, right, the greater the victory at the end because you're marked for the victory. You're marked for the victory. You're marked for the victory. Don't fall for the tricks. Don't do that. Because I, as I told you before, Satan usurps anything that's meant for good. Satan will seek to pervert it. He has gotten a hold of everything that was not washed by the blood of the Lamb. We know he is behind these kingdoms. The fruit of these kingdoms is nothing less than confusion, followed by death and anguish, followed by suffering and more death. And you know that to be true. You know that to be true. Men have spent time trying to reconcile these kingdoms. Without Christ, it cannot be done. And it will not be done. But quicker and quicker you see something else taking place, which is the evil, the evil of the situation you see is becoming prosperous. It seems like the iniquitous are prospering. And those who would have a way of righteousness are not. This is precisely why we talk about prophecy. This is precisely what God said would happen. Hopefully we all have that. Jesus said it must needs be that a prince has come, but woe through whom they come. Be aware of that so that you don't fall into that category. Right? <clears throat> be aware of that. You know, there are many Christians who are not aware of that. They're not. They cannot make heads or tails of what's happening. I mention this also because during this election, should somebody observe you, leaning towards one person or the other, they're going to demonize you for your choice. It doesn't matter what your choice is, you're going to be demonized. 
Prepare yourselves for that. Prepare yourselves for that. Hmm? All of us understand prophecy to a degree. We know that the kingdom of the beast is coming. This is the environment of that beast kingdom. And then, after all that, a false peace will come. Not a peace that you are familiar with. You will not recognize it as peace. You won't. It's when they establish something, right? And they agree upon something. That will not be holy at all. But the Lord gave us a warning about something else during this process. He said, if it were possible, even them very elect would be deceived. Now that is a very scary scripture. Because what it means is, you're going to have the righteous almost follow evil right over the edge. If not for God, everybody would be fooled. Do you hear me? And if he says, if it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived, that means a lot of righteous people are going to follow an evil thing. Lord have mercy. Are you ready for that? A lot of righteous people are going to believe in the evil things. They're going to follow something evil, thinking it's righteous. See, my alarm bells go off when, when because of prophecy. It makes me, I'm not following any man. I'm not doing it. I will not do it. I support Christ. I wait for him to point me in a direction. But anybody who pulls at my heartstrings, I will turn away. See, in this day and age, I do not accept anybody who would pull up my heartstrings. I will not do it because of the high level of deceit. It means that, that devilish and dark demonic figures are going to be seen by the righteous as good. That's what it means. So I'm not following flesh in any way. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to lean to someone because of what's popular. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to deem anybody as a Christian because they said so. I'm not doing it. I'm careful to follow the words of Christ during this time. And if I have to keep it to myself, then so be it. I'm not expecting anybody to my left or to my right to be like me. I'm not. I know as for me, as for me, in my household, we're doing it the Lord's way. We're not declaring anything or anyone anything. But seeking the absolute response from the Holy Spirit, direction from the Holy Spirit, which comes by way of Christ, in alignment with all the scriptures, without contradiction, no wavering. Because I'll say it again. The scripture says, if it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived. That means people are going to start seeing evidence that looks like righteousness. That's why when I have a dream, and if the whole dream comes true, right? Don't you believe in me because of some dream? Don't do that. That's just a dream. Don't say, well, Mike, uh, you know, Mike had that dream, and that dream came to pass. That makes him some. No, it does not. No, it absolutely does not. Your whole entire belief should be in Christ, not in someone with a dream. And do you not know? The greatest way to dishonor me is to lift me up. Christ should be lifted up, not me. So don't fall for the okie doke. Without the Lord, we are nothing. Without Jesus of Nazareth, we are nothing and have no hope. Because of Christ, a way has been established and we must be careful to seek.
that way that Jesus established. We must. Now, now if I were to ask that question, right? How do you know if a person's a Christian? Now you know. You know by the words of Christ. Jesus and his disciples are going to be known by how they love one another. And if a person is a real Christian, they are in fact a disciple, period. Aren't they? Hmm? Do you guys see that? You know what hurts? Is when you see another person follow anything you know that's truly dark. There are lots of things in this world that look wholesome and good. But they're so dark. See, you can't force a person not to follow something, not to, not to accept something. You, you can't do that. All we can do is encourage the truth of the Lord's word and pray. I mean, really pray that a person can hold on to the words of Christ. The darkness is spreading so rapidly. What seems harmless in this world is highly destructive. It really is. Harmless things that people enjoy carry seeds of massive destruction. I'll give an example. Anybody feel lifeless over this last USA-wide event called the Super Bowl? Did you feel lifeless afterward? Or were you lifted up? Because I guarantee you were one or the other. Like somebody sucked the air out of the room for some. Right? And almost, almost a type of violent celebration by others. Do you know that? Somebody said didn't watch it, but I can almost guarantee you could discern it. A change. A change. Here's what you may not know. Another ceremony took place all day that day. All day. All day, they're, they're, I'm going to call them the 13, got together, and all day long ceremonies took place. All day long. Do you know that? It was almost direct spiritual opposition to a believer. See, this time, this time, while people, while their attention was in one area, the 13 got together to anoint America in the darkest of ways. And look what has taken place since that time. Just look. You think that is coincidence? Hmm? Demons know witchcraft, too. There are much larger things happening. Oh. 
More now than ever. More now than ever. We require sobriety. We do. Because the world truly weighs in the balance this time. I personally expect a mass offering on the dark side of things. I do. A mass offering. So don't think it's strange when something weird happens. The 13, whenever they get together, whenever they get together all day, you better believe a mass offering is coming. And those mass offerings, they take place that demons will cover every area requested of by the 13. That means we better be covered by the blood of the Lamb. Because just in case you did not notice, there are more higher level demonic entities being set loose all over the place. Do me a favor, though. I will describe these things at minimal. Because I'm not going to reach down into the depths of darkness to give details of things that people will only go and search for and regret what they found. We are certainly not chasing witchcraft here. I'll mention them to make you aware. But I'm, there's no need to go into detail. That would be like stepping in the demonic realm to sit in on a meeting. I don't think that any of us would sit in on a meeting, at a demonic meeting, would you? Nobody's going to step into one of those demonic meetings just to see what they're talking about. I'm not doing it. So to discuss in depth what these guys were doing, no. Just have an understanding. When they get together like that, well, they have a track record. They also believe in what they're doing. We, we must be sober. If not for yourself, for the sakes of others. To cover your families, your friends, those you love. Cover them with prayer. With the Lord's prayer. Cover them. Intercede for them. In Revelation, there's a group, one of the churches, one of the angels of the churches. And the Lord commended them for not knowing the deep things of Satan. But the darkness they did know and what they went through, God said, I'll place upon you none other burden. But he said something special to those who did not know the depths of Satan. Now, it doesn't mean we become willfully ignorant of what demonic entities do. But be careful the procedures you seek to understand. To understand the procedures and the things they do is to have a comprehension of witchcraft itself. Please remember that. Try not to go too far. Try to be guided by the Holy Spirit. But be careful how far you go. All of us are older now. We know that if we look too far into something, right, we can also be taken by it, correct? Knowledge is free on the Internet. 
be careful how far you go. See, some people, some people looked up a UFO. And before you know it, their search turned into a two-year-long obsession, didn't it? And it was you just looking for a UFO, and it carried you all the way down a different highway. Be careful how far you go. We all know this. People may not speak it, but they know it. They know they got off track looking for things that did not profit to anything. And how much have people learned about UFOs? Isn't that funny? All the searching, all the knowledge, and how much. What did it yield in your life? You're back to square one. And if you learn a whole lot, you don't know what to believe. That's what everybody says. Well, I, I don't know what to believe. But all the while that you're searching in those things, you're not searching for Christ. Think about it. That's also a tactic. And all of us have been tricked by things like that. There's a multitude of subjects you could have searched that led you right back to square one. Right? We all know that. I'll say it again. The 13. The 13 is evil. The 13. All day long. They had their get-together all day long. All day long. And I, for one, expect a mass sacrifice. Matter do. So don't let that be a mystery. And it takes place, but understand that darkness never sleeps. We require sobriety because you're marked for victory. They can't touch you, or they would have touched you. And that brings us to something else. The last thing I want to tell you guys. Jesus warned us about offenses. You guys remember that? He said offenses must come. I want you guys to have an understanding that the spirit of offense, now I'll use that because it's kind of common. The spirit of offense is everywhere, which means whatever you say, somebody can find offense with it. Right? We know that's true because everybody's trying to sue each other over what everybody said. Everybody's prosecuting the other person based on what somebody else said. Why not? When, when you feel that urge coming up, right? Because the spirit of offense is strong when you feel that urge coming up. Put it down quickly. Stay within that realm or that path of grace and great sobriety. Try to identify the offense within yourself, not everybody else but yourself, that you stay up, stay away from that. Jesus said it must needs be that offenses come, but woe through whom they come. So don't let them come through you. An offense in the word of God is a stumbling. Do you know that? A stumbling. A stumbling, an errant way. Now, when he said, now listen to me, this is going to be different than what you thought. He said, it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to him through whom they come. An offense is a stumbling. A stumbling is based on an error. An error is something that's not correct in the word of God. Oh, boy. And then what that means is you can hear somebody say something, and it's not, it may not be biblically correct, but it may sound perfectly correct to you. And you can spread that thing. Thus, that offense will have gone through you. Uh, are you starting to see it? Now, in this world, for some reason, at this time, 
Everybody thinks they're right about their own interpretation of Scripture. Lord, forgive me for anything. Because we're so, listen, we're so free in thinking that we're correct about our own interpretation of Scripture, we forgot to give all that over to the Most High. When these offenses come, arguments start. When these offenses come, bad feelings come with it. My Lord, we've seen it manifest. We've seen it. A lot of people are scratching their heads now at fences. Wait a minute. What's that got to do with stumbling? That's what that word is. Stumbling. Stumbling. When you teach somebody else of a, a shaky thing, right? you, that means people are going to believe in shaky things. shaky things. See, the Holy Spirit has no disagreement at all. The Holy Spirit is one. Even Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Anybody who speaks by the Holy Spirit is going to speak a word of unison, a tight word with no offense, no stumbling in it. So essentially, the lesson is this. Be careful of what you carry. Follow me on this. That means if you guys hear me say something, and maybe it sounds pretty clever, don't you dare carry that to somebody else without referring to the Word of God first. Do you hear me? You know how people are taking man's words for things? I'll give you guys an innocent example. This is innocent, right? I'm not blaming anybody. It's not to blame. This is innocent. When I got injured last week, right, I did not mention what that injury was exactly. But all of a sudden, I broke my ribs and did a whole bunch of other things. I mean, the rumors flew. That would be, if, if that were the word of God and the assumption to fill in the blanks to make it complete were given, that would be an offense, a stumbling, something that causes others to stumble, right? Because it's not correct. It's, it's just not correct. If we believe in something that's not correct, we are stumbling. And we, indeed, if we tell, if we teach that to somebody else, then we approve of their stumbling. Now, Jesus said these offenses, it must needs be that they come. They are in the earth, you know, that spirit of hearing something and taking that on to the next person, right? It's already in the earth. It's in the earth. All of us, in, in some way, have also partaken of those things. But let's now become keenly aware of it and be careful that whatever we pass on has gone through the filter of righteousness. Get it? You guys see that? Let's be careful of that. It's so easy. It's so easy to hear something and then take that directly to the next person. It's so easy to do that, isn't it? Because we, when we trust someone, naturally we're not sitting there thinking they're going to, you know, try and give us a falsehood. That's normally not what happens. So it's not that you carry something that somebody tried to trick you on. That's not the case. When you trust someone, you trust what they say. And what I'm asking you to do is take it to the Word of God first whether you trust that person or not. That way. Because how many times have you heard people believe in something that's not even in the Word of God? And they're good people. Right? They're not bad people. But people make mistakes. I did, Angela told you guys have a mistake yesterday. I'm not going to repeat it, but it was a blooper, big-time blooper, right? I guarantee nobody would repeat that one. But again, it's not that someone is trying to trick you. But when it comes to the Word of God, 
verified with the words of Christ. So that whatever you're speaking, right? It's not going to be some flaw thing to, to give to somebody else. But actually become a help. Correct. Like if I mess up on something, then hey, Mike, you messed that all up. That was backwards. People have done that before. And I can see it because we misspeak sometimes, don't we? Sometimes we totally have something backward. No big deal. When it's corrected, and the Word of God is corrected for all of us, it helps all of us. Doesn't it? I don't take, uh, I don't take, uh, I'm not angered by those things either. I certainly am not angered. I'm highly appreciative of those things. But we've come to a time where to be careful to trust the Lord. Love your brother with all. Love your brother unconditionally. But trust the most time. Trust in him. That way all of us will have a refined word. Because this is going to be left unchecked. And watch what's going to. I'm telling you right now the gospel is being changed. Because things are slipping through. And now you have people believing in things with an entirely different interpretation than what Jesus ever spoke. You even have things added that have never been there before. For example, just the other day, some minister said that Jesus was gay. Yep, that's what they said. That's it. That's uh not not uh, that's what's happening in these days that we live in. And a lot of people believed in that. Tens of thousands were sitting there clapping their hands. Satan will seek to corrupt. Somebody said political or religious. No, this was inside of a church. This was inside of a church. This is what's happening. See, this is what happens when you trust the word of your brother and you're not verifying with the Lord. We are fallible. The Lord is infallible and incorruptible. So take the fallible words that we speak and verify them with the word of the unfallible Christ. And if you go and tell somebody something else, make sure they are the words of Christ. That's why you guys do... You don't hear me quoting authors, do you? You don't hear that, do you? You don't hear me quoting what somebody else read in a book somewhere, do you? The reason I don't do that is because I have an emphasis on the Word of God. And I know that people wrote or dictated the Word of God, right? I know that people sat down with manuscripts and did that. I know that. But that's the closest thing to the original that we have. And I like the truth. It resonates with me. It does. But there are a lot of concepts changing about what these people think Christ is and what he was in his story. And what they're doing, what are they doing? They're dethroning him. Because if they can say that Jesus had flaws, then him shedding his blood as the perfect sacrifice is null and void. Can't you see what's happening? Can you not see what's happening? 
Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. If they can somehow attribute a flaw to Christ, he is no longer the perfect sacrifice, thus causing Jesus to be of none effect to any of us, thus also taking away the sting of the penalty of the word of God, causing it to be just a book. Lord have mercy. They've been working on this for a while. And we've got to be careful not to do the same. Father, forbid us from doing the same. We have to remain sober in this time. We have to be careful to be sober in this time. Last year, the same thing was echoed during an interview. I believe it was on ABC. Two years before that, the same thing was echoed during an evening service. That it was. During the Roman, back during the time of Christ, the Romans said the exact same thing. See, there's a perversion, a deep perversion within the flesh that will always surface. And we know who's behind that. Satan is. Satan is behind it. He is the one that instigates these ideas, plants these ideas. And if we're not sober, we'll run away with them. If we're compromised, somehow, we're going to run away with them. So we're going to be careful not to be compromised like that. Hmm? We're going to be careful of that. Lord, we're reaching a time and a place that all of us read about, yes, all of us know about my goodness, it's different being in the middle of it, isn't it? It's different. And these things are growing, right? Tonight, understand about your government in the USA and abroad. Understand that, please. Understand. Things are changing rapidly. We are in a very, very tentious year. We are. Be mindful of those things. All of it will fall into place, but it's also going to become very confusing to many other people. A lot of people are not going to see it. They're not going to see it. They won't see it. They won't remember the stories in the Bible, the principles of Christ or of the Father. Thus, they won't be able to apply. They won't be able to rightly apply that word of truth to the, with the context of things that are happening today. They'll have no association with it. It'll be invisible. Things will continue to degrade. They will. But you are not to degrade. You're not to fall prey to any of it. You're to be highly aware. Is there a weight you're going to carry? Yes, because you don't want to see those you love fall, do you? That's part of the way. Somebody said, I feel that so many are compromised in ways I don't even realize. Sure, but that's what we're here for. We're right in the middle of it. God put us in the middle of compromised families, didn't he? Didn't he? You know how many people who believe in Christ have complaints about their own family? They'll say, my family won't listen to me. Well, why do you think God put you right in the middle of your family? But do me a favor. Listen to your family first. And God will see fit to give you what to say to them. When the time is right, and that time is coming, there's a time when people will seek you. The Word tells us that. They're going to seek somebody who believes in the living God because they won't have that belief in them. These are moments and opportunities 
men are coming. Until that time comes, continue in the word of God, understanding that the trials, tribulations, those troubles and conditions that you face in your life are to grow you, not to break you. God is not using anything in your life to break you. He's using it to grow you. That means they're highly purposed. That's what it means. Observe the controversy in the world, yes, but have, a, have, that, have that overall belief that your father knows exactly what he's doing. Don't become a challenger of what God is doing. Have an understanding that God knows exactly what he's doing. Start to see these events in the context of the word of God that we say we believe, right? Be sober in this time. Stay awake. We do those things, my goodness. The Lord's got us. Because then we'll be walking in the path of obedience. And we all know that the Holy Spirit is for those who obey the Lord. You're not to be powerless in this world. You are not to be powerless. But the power and authority, that comes through Christ. Christ. That comes through your Savior. Hmm? He's got you. Folks, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Or, well, actually later on today. I'm going to rest my voice. I'm going to do that so it doesn't go out. That would be awful if it went out. Right? It's, it's starting to come back in, and I don't want to go too much. God bless you guys. I did deviate from our original talk. Right? But uh, we'll have that talk here one day this week for runs out. Right? Or in Advents, we are going to be getting to you. We're going to have another open meeting. Uh, we'll schedule that within the next three days. We'll have an open meeting in COT, give you guys a status report in those meetings as to where we are and what we're up to. Okay? So everybody is on the same page. God bless and keep all of you guys. I'm getting better, a lot better, so... You know, I'll be, I'll be, uh, 100% here in a few hours, hopefully. I will. It's up to the Father. But guess what? Can you tell nothing is going to hold me back? I'm going to keep going regardless. Regardless. It's very simple, too. It's not because I'm tough. It's because I have a desire for the Lord's Word. And sometimes you guys have questions. And the Lord will have put the answer in me. And I have to get it to the people. And the only way to do that is to come on air. Right? And I've already agreed to do it. It is my joy to be able to help just one. If it took all of you just to help one person with one tiny, tiny, tiny issue, and that's what the Lord assigned me, then I'm honored. I know that in life, in ministries, you have to go through a thousand to get to the one. You have to suffer a thousand rebukes to give one amen. I know that. It's a lot you go through. And the one person is worth it, is what you must know. Now, if a human being can think like that, then you know your Father in Heaven thinks so much more about you than what you're able to comprehend. Isn't that awesome? If a human being can suffer a thousand people just to get to the one and nobody will ever find out, then how much more does your Father in Heaven? He moved Heaven and Earth just for you. Do you know that? He literally moved heaven and earth just for you. He moved heaven and earth like Mercury is about to move. Oops, did I say that? But he moved heaven and earth just for you. And that means he's not willing to lose you. All of the sinful things you've committed in your life was not enough to turn him away from you. Isn't that awesome? No matter what you did, he did not turn away from you. If you believe in Christ right now at this moment, if you actually believe in him, that belief was put in you 
that you would not be lost. Isn't that awesome? He put that belief in you so that you would not be lost. You, that, that is love beyond what we're able to comprehend. Hmm? We have rough times coming, yes. But your Father's eyes are upon you. Don't forget that. Don't forget it. God bless and keep all of you. I'll see you next time right here at COT. God bless.